Um, I'm on a train escaping from Romania. It's taken a month or two, but finally we're fleeing and we're heading towards Berlin. We, okay, on Monday we, we woke up at uh, early morning, I went to get some pastries, we had everything organized to... to the, the, the track was supposed to be on the port at uh, half past nine in the morning. Um, luckily we found the owner of the restaurant the day before, which is, was actually the, the son of the owner of the train. Um, and, um, and he came to pick us up at around 8 or half past 8, telling us that everything was organized for us to go, and that we could just go to the port. We were not sure if we could just go into the port, when we, when we should have gone to the port. It was, a bit, it was everything a bit open in the air. Um, but then, when he came to call us, we just tidy everything on the, on the roof. We set, we set off. Got up at the crack of dawn, uh, heading towards the port in Barilla. Uh, where a huge crane, a dockside crane, is going to lift us up and um, put us on a truck and then we're going to drive three days to Berlin and be dropped in at a marina there. See how it goes. <laughs> it's taken a month to organise this and it's still uncertain if it's going to work. Okay, then we went down river, turned to the port, all the police were just looking at us and thinking what the hell were we and we thought that they were going to stop us but they ignored us. So we turned to the port, um, luckily there was no big ships coming out, uh, we, we were not sure because the visibility was not that clear. Then the guy was waiting for us and then uh, we realized that we just could not more because of all the huge uh, for big boats but we moored next to a tug, to a tug boat um, and then I got off. Um, put set off, set, set the cameras. Amish moved the boat to wherever, to under the crane that was going to to to, to lift us up. Um, and then suddenly, when I look, uh, the boat was being lifted with Amish on the back. <laughs> Hopefully the boat arrives at some point, but um, we're just waiting for a phone call from the truck company that it's on the way, we might chase them up. And well, when we when the truck arrived, we just realised that he didn't have brought any supports for the boat. So I thought that everything was going to be postponed again. Uh, but then the guys from the port found us some tyres and some wood blocks to put under the boat and, and they've managed to make a bed for the boat to sit. Um, but it's a bit weird because it is like it so the boats is sitting on a bed of tires in the center and then some and then they had these big wood um, blocks on the sides and then on one side they put wood blocks and tires and on the other side they didn't they just put the wood blocks um, and then the guy was afraid that the boat was going to move so he, so he, he, he strapped the boat a lot and there is that point there with the wood blocks actually making lots of pressure on the boat so let's hope that there are not many bumps and we do need to look at the bottom of the boat carefully before we before we put it back on the water because that may have broken something uh, but hopefully not <laughs> we set off this year expecting to um, head to the Ukraine but um, we took a wrong turning after nice advice to go and see the Romanian Delta we took a wrong turning and it's been just a complete mess ever since everything we do we tend to not do so this year it's been interesting we had a lovely time but everything's gone wrong so um, so we uh, finally got back out of the Delta and uh, moored up on a restaurant mooring the guy seems friendly um, and then we spent about a month trying to find a truck and a crane combination. In the end, it all came together. We had a dockyard crane and a truck from Constanza 
it was a little bit more expensive than we kind of would like it to be but we just decided to pay the money and make it happen after faffing about for a month or so trying to organize trucks so the, the costs for lifting the boat and moving it to berlin were 150 euros for the crane in Bryla, uh, 50 euros for the mooring uh, where we stayed for a few months uh, on the restaurant the guy yesterday uh, one day before we left he asked us for 50 euros which which is actually almost nothing because we've stayed there for a month or two and we've used water and everything um, then we've paid 3,200 3, for the truck, uh, which we've paid half before and then half we paid when, when he arrives to Berlin with the boat safe and so on. Uh, and then 100 euros for the crane in Berlin. The guy from the restaurant organised it. Um, it turns out his father actually owned one of the companies in the port and had two cranes. So, um, so it was a very good connection. He turned up at eight in the morning and said, "Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, come on, get your boat there. Uh, the crane's ready to go." So, I, we, me and Anna, drove the boat into the port. Um, There's a bit of a blind turning into the port. We tried radioing, but nobody answered. So we turned into the port, hoping no huge shit was coming out at the time. Luckily, none was. Um, and we moored up next to a tug. Uh, Anna jumped off with the camera, um, and I and I motored the boat with one of the dockyard members on board over to this huge wharf with um, piles and there was nowhere to moor up against so we were just kind of hovering the boat around. Uh, I'd had my hernia so I was running around the boat thinking oh, this is not good. Um, they lowered down the straps um, the dockyard worker then actually put the straps over the front of the boat and the back of the boat while I was trying to hold the boat in, in the same place where I grabbed onto a cable hanging down. Um, I wasn't very, you know, I was a bit sort of thinking this could go horribly wrong. Uh, the boat was kind of spinning around a bit, but it was all worked out okay in the end. We got the, the things on. I got to the back of the boat thinking, okay, so I don't think we're getting off this boat before it flies. And whoosh, the boat went up into the sky and me holding onto the back of the boat. So um, the crane just went straight up. The boat was flying and then, then it started swivelling and the boat flew across the harbour on this huge dock crane heading towards the wall. I was thinking, ah! <laughs> okay, so I was holding on for dear life thinking, okay, it's a long way down, hanging on to the back of this flying boat. Um, and then the crane operator brought it to a stop just before we came to the, the dockyard's wall and then lifted it up over and um, hovered above the truck. So it all went surprisingly fast. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, so then um, there was a bit of faffing around to decide how to put it on the truck. They tried laying it on its side, because it's a wide load basically. They tried laying the boat on its side, but then decided not to because it had too much overlap. And then after about half an hour of faffing of trying different positions, they actually put it pretty much upright. Um, the boat was laid on tyres with wooden supports on the side. It looked pretty secure, then the truck driver applied the back. 10 different straps to strap it in place so it's pretty secure on the truck. Um, Anna ran around the top of the boat undoing all the tyres etc, sticking everything down, putting everything into the boat. I sat in the shade feeling a bit painful with the, the hernia but I think I was okay. Um, we had 10-12 dockyard workers <laughs> all helping out in various ways. Maybe it took about an hour to sort it out. Then we filled in some paperwork with the truck and we left the boat. Uh, we uh, got a taxi to the taxi to the um, train station and then um, got on a train to Bucharest. Uh, arrived in Bucharest, stayed overnight in a... Um, did we stay overnight in Bucharest? We did. We stayed overnight in Bucharest in a cheap hotel. Um, got up at the crack of dawn to get on a, a train to um, Berlin. And that train uh, turned into a bit of a fiasco. It was quite a small train and it filled up with well dodgy dudes. The old train was five in the morning or something and it was full of these big, heavy, violent looking men. And I was thinking, hey, this is a bit dodgy. And then the conductor came on and started ordering people around, big sort of, you know, official sort of fascist types. And um, it seems one guy maybe didn't have a ticket or something. So he got into a bit of an argument with the conductor, then these big fascist men all got up, about ten of them, and started beating the guy up, literally just thumping him. And the conductor stood there and ignored it. Um, 
we sat there, we didn't know what was going on, we didn't know what was, so you know, we just sat there. Some people fled the carriage because um, the police turned up. The police joined the train for the first um, first couple of stations, um, held us all up for about half an hour. Uh, they didn't arrest the guys who beat up the guy. The guy was taken off the train. We never did find out what happened. Um, uh, the train carried on. Um, we then stopped for um, a long time at the border crossings where they checked passports. We were running about an hour late. We got to Hungary, it took about half an hour, 45 minutes to go through Hungarian customs. Um, and then right coming into Budapest, we missed our connection. Well, our train was late, so um, we're stuck in Budapest for the night. Um, we've managed to update our tickets. We leave at seven in the morning tomorrow towards Berlin. So we're stuck in theory, the train company pays for the hotel. So we're gonna book a hotel and then um, send them the bill and see what happens. So now we're just buying reservations, which we then have to, which are separate to the ticket, which we then have to um, send to the train company and get reimbursed. What's the chance of being reimbursed? I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. We are going to be put on the water. We need to check the boat first. We are going to be put on the water. And then we are going to stay one or two days on that marina, maybe one day only on the, on the marina, which is on a lake on the west side of Berlin. Uh, then we will head to the spree and we go to this anchoring place. It's a bay in the center of the city where it looks like everyone stops. So everyone that we have been finding that lives in Berlin stop in that bay. Uh, when we get to Berlin, um, I think we stay in a, a hostel slash hotel overnight and then the, tr the boat in theory arrives on a truck at 10 in the morning tomorrow. And um, we have a, tra a crane booked which will lift it off the truck. We have to check for damage because it was mounted in kind of, not the best way, the, some wood was pressing too hard into the bottom. So if the truck had a very bouncy ride, it might have done some damage, I'm hoping not. Um, so we have to just check around the boat when we lift it up and make sure there's no damage. There shouldn't be any damage, then in the water she goes. Um, we, we, we booked to stay in the marina overnight. Um, just in case we spring any leaks, because we do have a history of springing leaks when we go back into the water, but we shouldn't again, because she's not been out of the water for long. Um, and then we go and anchor in the lake, and Anna goes for a swim. No, no giant three meter catfish to eat her alive, and no snakes to bite her, so she'll finally go for a swim this year. <laughs> But, but, but at least everyone is there and, and it looks so weird that the prices are actually quite good. Some, somebody that we met on the internet and is living there told us that it's the marina, the local marina is, is like 17 euros a meter uh, for a month for the winter mooring. So we may just check on that because we may need to escape for a winter to, to, uh, to a mooring in the, in the colder months. Uh, otherwise, um, when we are not in the winter mooring, it looks like Berlin has lots of 48 hours, 24 hours and 48 hours uh, jetties uh, spread uh, along the, 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 the river and the, the canals. Um, and we have a map that shows where these moorings are and we can just be jumping from mooring to mooring and stop in Kreuzberg on a mooring and then go out for coffee and with all the hipsters. And, and then go back to our anchoring point with the, with the alternative community and I don't know, let's see what we find.